Okay, um, this is part two of lab seven, seven uh, B. I call it sometimes. Um, and um, for me, I'm doing this immediately after I did seven A. But for you, maybe it was five minutes ago, or maybe it was five days ago. I don't know. Um, but what I do want to have you think about a little bit here is because we split it into play into two parts, we have to think about how we get the second R markdown file going. So in regular R, you might think that it remembers, and of course it does, but as we've seen before, our markdown files are meant to be totally self-contained. So we have to basically rerun all the stuff we did before in the part A, again in part B. So um, we don't have to install packages again. We do have to, however, get the wine uh, data frame imported. So we can either do that from the internet, which is what I just did, or you could comment that one and uncomment that one to get it from your file, depending on how your internet connection is working. The variables are the same. Um, next up, we're gonna run all of those models that we made before. So here's our simple linear regression. Here's our simple R part uh, regression tree. And then whichever one you ended up making with the complexity parameter, go ahead and install there. I'm gonna put in um, 005. Oops, 005 even though I think that wasn't the number that you got. Um, and then we're gonna compare uh, the CV fits of the two models and what we'll see. Um, all right, it takes a minute to run. Um, but what we'll see here is that we get our um, CV fold numbers and they should be pretty close, but um, the better number will be slightly lower. Because remember, these are measures of error, so a lower number is better. The number you found, I think, will be better still than the number I found. These are made from random variations, so depending on uh, what your seed was, depending on what else you've run, you might get different answers. Um, if you run it straight through like I just did, you should get these uh, same numbers. Okay, um, then um, we can go ahead and make our uh, two plots um, to compare the trees. More directly, what you can see is the automatic one looked like that, and the more complicated one has a lot more nodes. Notice that as far as a visual goes, the text is really small. Uh, maybe if we blew it up, we could have that. But if we were really going to use this tree to talk to um, clients or our boss or whatever, we'd have to go in and fix the text or make it a bigger, you know, big piece of paper or something so that we could read it. Uh, what the outputs are. It is true that we can see that it goes from white to blue, from light to dark. All right, so um, now what we're going to do is we're going to switch back to thinking about classification. So um, you might remember that quality of wine was a numerical number that went from one to nine, and in practice it actually only had three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So maybe we want to treat it as categories rather than as numerical numbers. Now Normally, you wouldn't have a data set that would work both ways. Um, this data set sort of does, partially because um, there are only a few wine categories that are actually used. So um, what I'm doing here in this chunk in line 66 is I'm turning quality into a factor variable. And right, we had to do that on the midterm. Um, but here we are changing um, the values um, from a number where they were 5.0 to uh, factors. Now we can go ahead and make a classification tree. So you remember classification and regression tree. We were making regression trees, now we're gonna make classification. And here we go. And what you see is that the graph actually looks kind of different. Notice that the outputs are whole numbers now. Um, if we did want to include that extra material with a little, uh, remember that was extra equals two from the uh, big picture one. And now you can see how many of the numbers go into each of the different categories and notice um, that these two categories actually have a lot of the uh, data and the one down here as well. Okay, the question asks you to, to compare those a little bit. Now, um, we talked about accuracy in the one uh, big idea video, but of course you're not gonna just count them up on your fingers, which is kind of what I did in that video with the uh, uh, shoe size and the heights from the Kim data, but we're instead gonna use this predict command. So the predict command um, what it does is it finds the values um, that do the best job. So um, one thing is that if we do type equals prob, it's going to give you the probability of following in each category. So for this first row of data, here are the probabilities that it thinks your model falls in each one. So there's a 75% chance 
that it thinks this wine would be categorized as a five, 18% it would be in a six, and smaller probabilities for the others. When we do this as a class variable, it's just going to give you um, the numbers that you have. So wine number one is categorized as a five, wine number two is categorized as a five. Even though three, four, five, six, seven, eight are used, most of our predictions are going to be four, five, and six because that's how um, the data comes out. Now, as we did before, we can find that accuracy or classification error by hand. Um, here I did it in uh, dplyr. Um, super fun um, calculations, just like we were doing back here a few weeks ago. However, the metrics package has some options for doing that. So here is the metrics package. Again, if you haven't installed it before, you can install it here. And then CE is just a command and that gives us our classification error. Notice that it's the same as we had up here. Um, and it is sort of funny, classification error is the term used for the percent that are wrong. Accuracy is used for the percent that are correct. So um, that's kind of a funny thing here. So, um, so we will want to do that in there. Now, cross-validation models will actually calculate that for you directly. So here's our CV fit command, and we can put in our classification error in as a cost. Um, and that says rather than using RMSE, which is the default, um, it's going to do it this way. And now we can compare our variable. Notice that this error is actually way bigger than we had before, um, both when it's compared to the full data set and even to what we had before before. Um, so as we talked about with the test and training set, when you split the data up, you would expect the errors to be a little bit worse. Okay, question four asks you to go ahead and play with that complexity parameter, see if you can uh, get a better job. You might need to pause the video here or watch the whole video and go back and do the homework a little bit later. Uh, and the same is true here. We can do the plotting just like we did up at the top of part B to see how our two trees would look. Now, while it was fun to manually go in and fiddle with those complexity parameters, you could also imagine having the computer do it for you automatically. And so there's a command called CV tuning um, that will do um, sort of the same thing for you. Um, however, we have to figure out what um, complexities we're going to have. So we have to put in um, a sequence. So a sequence is just a thing where it says go from one value to another value by a certain amount. So 0 0.001, 0 0.003, 0 0.005, 0 0.007. If you want to check out the help, you can go over here and look at sequence or use the question mark um, to see how it does it. But basically, you're going from this value to this value using steps of the third value. So it counts up that way. And right, that would be a lot easier to do than to do that kind of manual, let's pick a whole bunch of numbers and plug them in. So here is the CV tuning command and notice that here in this tuning, I've put what the possible complexity parameters can be. So now it's gonna run and it is going to um, compare all of those. So now again, it's gonna be slower because it's running this um, however many times, 10 times, to get the results. Notice it gives us the class, class of cross-validation uh, classification error for each one. And notice that the values are different a little bit. And it says 0 0.007 is our best one. Um, you might get a slightly different one because of the way the random numbers worked. If we wanted to get identical numbers, we would reset the seed here um, so that we could do that. And then once we do that, we're going to make the R plot of that. So this shows how that CV error changes across the different complexity parameters. And as you can see on mine, 0 0.007 is the lowest. Again, yours might have a different value for that. For uh, classification, it works the same way. Um, here we are, we'll just let this run automatically because um, we've already written this code um, to do it. But you can see the CV tuning um, has how many trees, how many things, what values. Um, and we can see here that our lowest value was the best one. That might make us think that we want to try even lower ones. Um, and again, we could do um, a retuning where we would now look between 0 
0.05 and 0.005 and make up new sequences uh, that would find that value. Um, okay, then um, we're getting near the end of this lab, but what we want to do now is find the model that worked the best and um, go ahead and define them here. So here I am using these uh, values. Your values might be a little bit different. Those are the ones I had. Um, and so um, we want to go ahead and run those. Now, when we're doing classification models, sometimes if we don't get the output to be as a classification, we can round the model and that will give us the whole numbers that we need. And now we can compare those values <clears throat> to get what it is um, that we want. And we can see here that the CE for um, the classification is a little bit lower. In my case, yours might be a little bit different. And then um, the final question asks you to go ahead and make those trees. So there's a lot going on here. Again, we're not going to be doing those calculations by hand, but what we want to understand is how to get the computer to do the various calculations for us. How do we get it to run not one tree, but a bazillion trees? And you can imagine as your computer gets faster, as your problem gets faster, you might want to make more and more of these models. Next time we're going to get into random forests, which is a way of having the computer generate tons of trees. Um, forest is a lot of trees um, in order to find really good models to do that. But what we'll see is it becomes more and more of a black box where we don't know what's going on inside as we start automating more and more of these uh, procedures.